Welcome everyone, Tactical Edge here. Today we are back to the battlefields of the Ladies Quest tournament. Another battle between JMG and Marco Magno. Now the matchup is quite peculiar right now with JMG going for the Nurgle army which is quite susceptible to missile spams. While on the other side we have the prime missile faction, the Dawi. So for the army builds here, we have a line of Nurgling supporting Triple Plague Mortar, Kugath Plague Father himself coming in with Stream of Corruption, Nurgling Tie to summon Explosive Nurgling, Plague Father's Oration for additional melee defense and leadership, Rensive Visitation to kill off single entities, and also Fleshy Abundance for healing. And also there are a couple more Soul Grinder for additional fire support. Now, for the rest of the army, we have some skirmishing forces, Marauder Horsemen of Nurgle for their throwing axes, skirmishing cavalry, a bunch of warhounds, and some Chaos Furies in disguise for mobility. And on the other side of the battlefield, we have the Dawi, a staunch line of armored bodies here. Front line of miners with blasting charges, second line of dwarf warriors supported by a ton of missiles, iron drakes, a unit of thunder on each side. Both throwers at the back, flanked by two longbeards with great weapons. In the skies, four gyrocopters with brimstone guns in total. That's all for the army builds. Now let's go into the battle itself and see how the Nurgle army tackle the overwhelming Dawi firepower. With all three Plague Mortars on the field, two Soul Grinders plus Kugath himself, funny enough, Nurgle actually has stronger artillery than the Dwarves in this battle. You can see that the Boat Throwers and the Iron Drakes are already taking noticeable damage from all the bombardment, especially the Boat Throwers whose crew are taking a lot of casualties. Even the Miners far to the front has taken some damage from the bombardment. Due to the questionable accuracy of the plague mortars, that is some rather unfortunate collateral damage. And on the side there, the gyros are trying to move up to deal with the soul grinders, but unfortunately the Chaos Furies are here to stop them from getting too close to these expensive Nurgle artillery. They will be pushing back the gyrocopters while the thunders will be shooting at them with some overwatch fire. This draws the attention from the soul grinder who will be aiming at these thunders. Having their side facing the soul grinder is a dangerous move because the soul grinder bombardment spreads across a vertical profile. The projectiles usually land in front or behind the aimed mark. Positioning your troops like this is basically matching them with the projectile spread of the plague mortars. Now with the chaos furies being pushed off momentarily by the thunders, the gyros have seized an opportunity to move closer to the soul grinder and now start firing at the soul grinder. But the soul grinder is fast on their legs, limbs, uh, robotic feet. They can easily move back, draw the brimstone guns forward, while the chaos furies can come in from behind and trap those gyrocopters in melee combat. Plus, whatever damage they took can be easily recovered by some Nurgle healing. We'll fast forward a bit as we are in a bit of a kite phase right now, not a lot of action happening. The gyros are moving back and then the Chaos Furies are quickly pursuing them from behind. Having slightly more speed than the gyros, the Furies manage to catch up with the Dwarf Flyers and are now slowly chipping away their health. Now the Thunders are trying their best to shoot up those Chaos Furies and whittle them down, but the problem is that the Nurgle Plague Mortars have been bombarding all those Thunders this whole time significantly weakening their firepower reducing the Dwarf's anti-air capabilities. And very unfortunate as well, with the Dawi units pushing forth, their box has been broken, they can't afford to sit there to box up, so the Boat Furies have been exposed to a charge from the Chaos Warhounds and will be finished off. The Chaos Furies are pressuring the Gyrocopters, but the Dawi player here very skillfully dropped the Gyrocopters onto the ground, just land them, forcing the Chaos Furies to fall up and drop onto the ground as well, making them more vulnerable to a charge from the Dawi infantry, being forced back and shot up by the thunders also being hit up by a very nice flash bomb to slow them down and you can see that at least one of the chaos furies have been crumbling fading away from reality leaving only wait there's only two furies left on the field so actually another fury has been dealt with earlier so two furies on the ground and some chaos warhounds who are dealing with the thunders but thunders with their at armor should be able to stand up to this charge decently buying more time for the Chaos Dwarf infantry and miners with blasting charges to screen away the Nurgle mobility. On the far side, very unfortunate for the Dwarves, the Iron Drakes has been isolated and finished off by the combination of Soul Grinders and Chaos Furies. The Dawi's best option to snipe Kugath has been dealt with, and the second best options, the Thunders, are also very depleted. Still trying to shoot up those Chaos Furies. 
There are some dwarf warriors sacrificing their lives trying to push Kugath Plague farther. They do have enough speed to catch up with the Nurgle Lord, but they simply don't have the DPS. Doing very, very minor damage to Kugath, basically just trying to drag him into melee and buy more time for the rest of the missiles to finish off the Nurgle mobility and start pushing those single entity artilleries. The Eindrakes came back, but now will be charged by the Marauder Horses and Chaos Furies, and they will be seen off. While the Thunder is now in a rather square formation, making them prime target for the Plague Mortars. At the back there, Chaos Furies once again return to the battlefield, should be able to finish off whatever remains on the boat for a crew. Some Thunders are still firing into the fray, but the Furies are quite healthy right now, having physical resistance as well, should be able to get out with minimal casualties. While over here, the gyros are moving close, however, they forgot to fly up into the sky once again, so they are actually eligible for a charge from the soul grinders, taking a lot of damage from the charge, they only have like 6 melee defense, might as well not have any melee defense. Some gyros are popping shots on the soul grinder, but that is not going to save that one gyrocopter model that is finished off by the Soul Grinder, and also the fire support from the Throwing Axe is doing some very substantial damage to the Gyros as well. The Gyros really need to fly back into the sky, while over here, Grom Brindle actually YOLO'd himself against Kugath, but Kugath is holding up just fine with some Nurgling support, forcing back Grom Brindle because Kugath has healing, Grom Brindle doesn't. He wants to fight Kugath with the support of his friendly infantry. Now, Thunder is now shooting at the Nurglings, not the greatest use of their ammo, but might as well shoot all those bullets out before they got finished off by the Plague Mortars. The Iron Drakes once again came back, but with only 8 unit models and 200 something HP, I don't know how much they can do here. While the Gyros still haven't returned to the sky just yet, they really need to go back into the skies and start shooting at stuff instead of being dragged into melee like this, taking a lot of unnecessary melee damage, while at the back there, Thunders are on their last leg shooting at some Chaos Furies who dare to venture close and will be pushing them off with the Overwatch fire. We'll do a little bit more fast forward here as the remaining Thunders are dishing out whatever damage they can before being routed off, dealing with some of these Marauders. Actually, the kite of the Nurgle army here is a little bit off, being caught by the Miners with their blasting charges and the Marauder horses with throwing axes will be shattered. Dwarf Warriors should be able to outgrind the Nurglings while the Soul Grinders are still blasting away at the Thunders, one of them down to the last 4 unit models they would not come back I assume. And the other one having only 19 unit models and 600 HP will be finished up by a charge from the Chaos Furies. Now all that's left for the Dwarf Army is pretty much these Gyrocopters who are somehow still on the ground but either way they are surviving so it is not the biggest issue here, they still have quite a bit of ammo left. But is that enough to go through all that Nurgle HP and healing? Let's see. There's already two Brimstone Guns running out of ammo charging into melee combat against the Nurgle single entities. A better way to use them is definitely to charge those Nurglings instead, recharging them should be able to do some good damage. Unfortunately, the targeting mechanic of this game dictates that when they run out of ammo, the ranged units will automatically charge into their targets. So instead of attacking the Nurglings, those gyrocopters automatically attacked Kugav, being isolated by all those armor-piercing single entities, being destroyed in melee combat and having very minimal impact on the battle. Now the remaining gyrocopters with ammo are unloading everything they have into Kugav Plate Father, but there's also still the Soul Grinders here, but I assume the Dwarf plan is just to finish them with Grom Brindle's powerful melee stats, and the Miners should be supporting this fight here. Flash bomb hitting the Soul Grinder, slowing it down, preventing it from pulling out too easily, doing some little bit more of a grinding damage. Not too substantial here. While in the skies, their Chaos Furies continues to pester the Gyrocopters. Luckily for the Dwarfs, the Gyrocopters have quite a bit of armor so they can tank out the damage for a bit of time. A stream of corruption doing a lot of damage to the Longbeards and the Miners with blasting charges, the Miners will be terrified away by the presence of the Soul Grinder and Kugath Plague Father. While in the skies, one of the Gyrocopters are on the verge of routing, being caught in melee combat by the Furies for a bit too long. Yes, they have heavy armor but they also have terrible melee defense at only 6, might as well not have any. 
Finally, the weakened gyrocopters are trying to get away while the rest of the gyros are converging onto that one sole unit of Chaos Furies, simply trying to overwhelm it with their sheer numbers and armor. The rear charge penalty plus charge bonus should do some okay damage, not the greatest, but okay damage to the Chaos Furies and push them into fading away. The problem is still the single entities here. All two soul grinders are still fighting strong and Kugav is still very very healthy with over 10k HP left. The Nurgle probably still have a lot of healing in their back pocket and on top of that, the Dwarf's ammo are now running low. There is only one unit of Gyrocopter still having any ammo left, the other one has been routed having only 3 unit models as well. But thankfully they have returned and should be able to come back and start shooting at Kugav once again using their anti-large and armor piercing to maximum effect. Unfortunately the dwarves have no options to exert any control on the movement of soul grinders. They also have much higher speed than the dwarf infantry and can easily cycle charge and kite away that charge absolutely wrecked that poor unit of Dwarf Warriors wrecking around a quarter of their HP off. To make things worse for the Dwarves, the Soul Grinders and Kugav has regrouped, fighting shoulder to shoulder. Powerful single entities blobbing up is always dangerous to infantry, and the Dwarves are struggling to deal with all these Nurgle powerhouse. More and more gyros are running out of ammo and start charging into melee combat, quickly beaten back by Kugav and the Soul Grinder. The Dwarf Infantry are out grinding all the Nurglings, but they don't have any effective ways to deal with the Soul Grinder and Kugav. So, with all three single entities with armor piercing beating down Grombrindo, the Nurgle army is outright dominating this blob fight. Grombrindo is taking more and more damage, and the Dwarf Infantry simply cannot afford to blob in because a stream of corruption plus Kugav's Mortis Engine effect will easily drain away their health. So eventually, Grombrindo ran out of health and will be destroyed by the Nurgle single entity power, the Triple Plague Mortar, in melee combat. GG to both JMG and Marco Magno, and with this victory, JMG was able to move on to the finals of the Ladies Quest tournament. For the army performances, JMG has a really interesting Nurgle build here, using the long range firepower of the Plague Mortars, the Double Soul Grinders, and Kugav Plague Father, doing substantial damage to the Dwarves, just bombarding all their densely packed infantry, and also shut down their Iron Drakes and other ranged firepower. At the same time, the Chaos Furies were harassing the gyrocopters with brimstone guns stopping them from firing so that the double soul grinders and Kugav plague father can spend more time shutting down those dwarf infantry lines as for the rest of the army here the hounds and the nurglings didn't really do much damage most of the work were done by the single entities here really showing how powerful Kugav can be both in range and in melee as for the dwarves here Grumbrindo tried his best but unfortunately Fighting against one of the best duelists in the game, Kugav Plague Father, having just insane HP pool and good armor piercing melee stats as well. Grombrindo was not able to fight through all that healing, and the gyrocopters, despite doing significant damage, being constantly pressured by the Furies limited their performances and also being caught in melee combat multiple times also took a lot of damage that they could have avoided. But more importantly, the ranged assets in the Dwarf Army today were not able to handle this Nurgle build well. Being outranged and outshot, they got destroyed before doing any effective damage to the Nurgle single entities. As for the Dwarf Infantry, once the ranged components of the army got completely shut down or ran out of ammo, they were not able to carry this game alone because they simply can't outgrind a Nurgle army, especially when Kugav is still in the fray, dropping in those streams of corruption and his Mortis engine effect. And yeah, that's it for today's battle. I hope you enjoy it, and if you want to see more Total Warhammer multiplayer content, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Tactical Lich, signing out.